Welcome to the Entertainment Rants Podcast, your number one opinion source for all things entertainment. Join host Marco Mazzola as he sounds off on the latest movies, TV, music, gaming, comic books, and more. Now, here's the man of the hour, Marco Mazzola. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Entertainment Rants Podcast. I am, as always, your host, Marco Mazzola, and we are joined tonight by my wife, Amy. Hi! And tonight, we are doing The Big Bang Theory. Mm, I love The Big Bang. One of our favorite shows, right? We watched that one uh, pretty religiously. It's one that we definitely binge watch and watch over and over again. Mm-hmm. It's uh, sort of a sleepy time show. Yes, definitely. Go on a show and go to go to sleep. We're watching in the background, or it's one of those shows. If it's on TV, no matter what time, we'll watch it because it's just a wonderfully uh, done show. Now, a couple of little stats on the show, just like we did for the last one. Let's give a couple of stats before we get into it. Um, the show ran uh, for on CBS from 2007 to 2019. Yes, it was a wow. long running show. 280 episodes total. Um, you had 12 seasons. So, I mean, it's just, uh, obviously a well uh, done show mm-hmm. and a huge, huge hit. Huge hit. I mean, the last couple of years, like when they got to like season nine, I believe it was, they basically just contracted them out for the next couple of seasons. Like, you never do that. They contracted for like two or three more seasons, like right away. I think it was two. Usually it's one season wow. at a time. Right? Yeah. You buy one season at a time and you know, you know, you. During hiatus, you find out, or sometime during the season, you find out if you're going to come back for another season. Well, and they were going to go even longer, right? But yes. Jim Parsons decided, decided he to, needed to, you know, he needed to move, move on, on to other and things. And he was doing Young Sheldon, so, like, you know, he was still kind of into that character, into that world, but he wanted to, you know, go out on the high note. So mm-hmm. um, so let's go over the, the cast list, just to our main cast, obviously, uh, starring Johnny Galecki as Leonard Hofstadter, Jim Parsons as Sheldon Cooper, Kelly Cuoco, who's still credited as just Penny. Kaylee. What did I say? Kelly? Kelly. I'm sorry, Kaylee. I thought I said Kaylee. My apologies. Kaylee Cuoco, uh, who played Penny, and Simon Helberg, who played Howard Wallowitz, and Kanal Nayar, who played Raj Kutharpali, Rajesh, uh, Melissa Rausch as Bernadette Rostinkowski Wallowitz, uh, Mayim Bialik as Amy Farrah Fowler, and uh, Kevin Sussman as Stuart Bloom. So that was your main cast. Now, Stuart came on kind of later and then wasn't quite a main cast character until like the last season or two. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was in more of the episodes. But he was point. around always. He was. So 280 episodes. Um, now, here's a, a fun fact. The only two who are in every single episode are Johnny and Jim. Like They're the only two, Leonard and Sheldon. So Penny missed an episode. So did Simon Helberg. Uh, Raj, Melissa Rausch was 209 episodes and because she came in a little, she came in a little later. later. Yeah. Um, and then Maya Biala came in a little later than that, but she only by six episodes later. She was on a 2000, she's in 203 episodes. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And obviously there to the end. So yeah, about six, seven episodes, they were difference between them. Um, so, you know, go over the, let's go over the show. The, so the premise of the show obviously is a group mostly of scientists, you mm-hmm. know, in, geek, nerds, whatever you want to call them. You know, Leonard and, and uh, Sheldon live together in an apartment, and then you basically, uh, it, it, who moves in next door is Penny, right? Who then, Leonard, Johnny Galecki, falls in love with immediately. Um, and, and you know, it, it, one of the first things he says about her is, you know, our children are going to be smart and beautiful, which I thought was great because they brought it up in the last episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really yeah, sweet. I thought that was a great way to, like, sort of finish out the show. Um, you have Howard, their, their uh, engineer friend, now they all work together except for um, Penny. Obviously, they work together at um, Caltech. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then and Raj is their astrophysicist friend, and then Melissa Bernadette, who plays Bernadette Rostenkowski, she is first just a waitress with Penny at the Cheesecake Factory, but she's getting her degree PhD in microbiology. Mm-hmm. She ends up becoming a doctor as well, and then we eventually meet Maya Bialik or Amy Farrah Fowler because they're trying to basically get Sheldon to date, like to get him to see if they experiment on a dating website to see if they can find a match and they find her and she's in like an exact. Yeah. At the beginning. Him. But we'll talk about her arc, her development mm-hmm. within the show because it's pretty massive, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, they all have really good yeah. developments. Development. Um, I feel like Raj was probably the least. <laughs> he kind of starts the show as like the awkward geeky can't get a guy and ends the show or can't get a girl like an awkward 
can't get a girl at the end of the show, still still not with anybody. No, but he's definitely less like involved with his parents and more on his own. And, yes. You know, I think there's more of those things that Raj developed in yeah. for sure. Um, so let's let's talk about who was your favorite character in the show. And it could, it could be Sheldon. It doesn't have to be Sheldon, obviously. No, it's he not was Sheldon. He the breakout character. He really was. And and I enjoy Sheldon, but um, I really like Amy Farrah Fowler. Like, she's really... I, I like her, and I like Penny. I like the evolution of Penny, but I like Leonard, too. I mean, mm-hmm. I like them all. There were different reasons I like all of them yep. as they evolve over time. Yeah. Um, and you get to see them in different ways, in different modes. I do. Um, but I do think Amy Farrah Fowler is probably the one I identify the most with why is that um i don't know i just i think she's really like she's more moderate yeah than all of them um i think if people asked i'd probably you might say i'm more like bernadette maybe if it would get me in trouble (laughs) but i think i i i think like the way that amy manages sheldon and moderates him i definitely See more of myself in that. Sure. And in the work that I do yep. and maybe even in my relationship a little bit. Maybe. Maybe a little bit. There might be some of that going on. I, maybe not. We'll see. And, um, yeah, I like it. So I, I, I could see that, though. I could definitely see that. Definitely some Amy and you. Um, you know, Amy and Amy. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I know it's a cop-out, but Sheldon is still my favorite character. I really love him. I really do. Um, I always say, you know, being a genius, obviously, you know, I, I don't consider myself a genius by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so I'm not identifying with that part at all. I, you know, his what he comes out with and he says and the way they wrote that character. Um, but his quirks, you know, certain things. He's he's very rigid. He's uh-huh. super super rigid. Uh-huh. You know, uh, things have to be a certain way. Uh-huh. You know, so I, I definitely I definitely identify with that. I mean, I, not to say that I identify with his, which one of my favorite episodes, which is one of the most poignant and sad episodes is his storage closet episode when you know, he takes Amy because he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to recycle the computer, the laptop that she, you know, the old laptop that mm-hmm. died and he shows her the storage unit that has like everything he's ever owned. Yes. Um, which there's so many great lines in the show, but one of my favorite lines when he's just like, you know, this must seem pretty weird, you know, to you or whatever she says. And she goes, no, I want to tell you this is, this is normal. So I'm going to need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way that Amy, you know, Maya Bay, like delivers that line, the pause that she gives, that pregnant pause, which is like, so I'm going to need a minute. <laughs> was because she really wants to tell him that, but she can't yet. That was one of my favorites. But, you know, I, you know, I, in some ways I do identify with that. Like, I do have a hard time getting is this, this stuff. Is this leading up to you telling me there is such a storage locker I'm going to have to go to with you? Oh, no, no. You know about the storage lockers with the pop figures. Like, you're, you're well aware of that. <laughs> You're well aware of that. That's the only one. That's the only one at some point you have to clean out. Um, well, hopefully they'll be in our home. You can clean them out there, do whatever you have to do with them. Um, melt down the plastic. You do what you got to do. So, um, now what about Leonard's character? I like Leonard. Johnny Galecki. I mean, I, I, so I always liked, even though I was never a big fan of Roseanne, yep. I liked his character on Roseanne. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I actually thought he was too good for Darlene. <laughs> yes. I th- right, because she, yeah, he was sweet and innocent and just wanted to help and please her. And she kind of like beat him around a little bit and kind of took him for, took advantage of him a little mm-hmm. bit or took him for granted, really. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? His, his sweetness and his kindness and, you know, like not really committing to him in a way yeah. that he really wanted to commit to her. Yeah. I, so I liked him there, even though I wasn't a big fan of that show. Yeah. The few episodes that I did watch yeah. had him in them. Mm-hmm. I always felt bad for him. But I did, I think his character, to me, at least initially, was the most relatable. Yeah. Um, he's just very sweet. He wants to do the right thing. He doesn't have tremendous <laughs> social skills or ability, or he's just been interested in different things. And because he is so smart, is you know on a different level for people. So yeah. he's really... Um, you know, he's working very hard with yeah. all of those things. So I, I, I like Leonard. I've always liked Leonard from the begin- beginning. I did not like Howard from the beginning. No, and you weren't really supposed to. Like, you found him funny, goofy, but he was, you know, a womanizer type of thing, and very rude and awkward. He was and not a womanizer. He wanted to he be wanted a womanizer, to be one. He was a, he, but he well, couldn't he was a, be. Yeah, he, exactly. He was a poser. He wanted. He thought he was a ladies' man, and but he was just that awkward you know, uh, the way he would talk to women or talk about women, things like that. You know, it was just that overly done. I don't, I can't get women, so I got to 
talk about them as if I did, as if yeah. I do, as if yeah. I am a ladies' man. But yet in the background, you know, he's not. Mm-hmm. Um, go back to Leonard, though. Like, I think he had some of the one of the biggest arcs, too, of like his development, where in the beginning he was very nerdy and awkward and didn't know how to say or talk to people, talk to women. But by the end, like, he was their rock, he was their glue in the whole group, right? And he was more adult and kind of, you know, would explain things in a way like i think in the beginning he didn't see things but then by the end he did see things right like the episode where and i was just watching this one and, and as good at this stuff as penny was um it was the one where bernadette was giving birth to, mm-hmm. ha- to hallie and you know uh amy and sheldon obviously are going to have coitus because it's yep. her birthday right and they're like oh that gets interrupted because they have to go to the hospital but then like they're running down the stairs and Leonard has to go back up for his inhaler because he ran downstairs too fast and he comes down, he's wheezing, and they don't have to go to the hospital. And so it, Penny's like, oh, let's just go out to a diner. And Amy and, and Sheldon are like, well, uh, ooh, it's very awkward. They don't want to say, like, we're about to have sex. We want to go back upstairs. And Leonard was the one who's like, they want to go have sex. Like, just <laughs> let them go. They want to, we can go out, dude, but they want to go have sex. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So, like, he caught on to something like that. Like, mm-hmm. and I think in the beginning of the series, he would not have caught on to something like that. That would have been way over his head, too. Because he was, you know, on that par with Sheldon. Not quite as awkward, but, you know, uh, there. Um, the opening of the show. Well, you know, like, like I said, back to that. Penny, I think, was weird that she didn't catch that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Penny was obviously the one where, like, you know, even the flashback, she was the one taking the pregnancy test in Howie's high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's how they, and they definitely changed her character up a lot, too, over the years. Um, but we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about her last name at some point as well. Because People think it slipped and that there is it's the last there. name. Out, the last name's out there. Um, anyway, the the season, the, the first episode, do you remember how it opens? She's moving in, right? No. The very first scene of the episode is Leonard and Sheldon going to a sperm bank. Going to, and they're in the office. And it's the same actress who was the receptionist there who played the receptionist nurse at the hospital when Howard goes because he's all puffy. It's Wanda Sykes, isn't it? No, it's not Wanda Sykes. No, who's amazing, by the way. Uh, I'll get her name, but she, um, She's the same act. She's been around for a lot of stuff. I think she was on like 227 or she's like, she's one of those ladies who's been around forever, right? Uh, amazingly talented, but it's the same actress. So she's like, she's a nurse in that little clinic and also at the hospital. You know what I mean? Like they mm-hmm. just kind of reuse her a bunch of times. And I feel like she was on Friends one episode or something like that. Like Probably. she was, the, she was again, she plays that nurse mm-hmm. receptionist very much a lot. Like that's just kind of her shtick, I guess. Um, Cause she's good. She's got that kind of sarcastic, like, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. Annoyance, you know what I mean? She was the nurse during Bernadette's pregnancy. Yeah, right. I remember like, that. Yeah. You, you know, home births are very popular these days. Same person, same person. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's how it opened, which I thought was like looking back on it, it's kind of weird. That's kind of weird, yeah. and that's the same opener. It's like a show originally. It wasn't Penny. It was a different woman who was I can't remember her name, and it was a lot. Not darker, but the Penny character was mean. She was kind of nasty, mm-hmm. and she like really like took advantage of Sheldon and what like she was like almost like that girl that came on. Remember that one episode where she was taking advantage of them? And she was like having them hook up all their stereo and things like that. Remember oh yeah, the, the, the yeah. Blonde, yeah, and yeah. Her and Penny ended up wrestling on the ground. It was she was kind of like that, but she was supposed to be the Penny character, and it didn't test very well. So they reshot the pilot. They're like, all right, give it another shot. You know, like they, they took the chance and said, all right, give they gave more money. Said, all right, take another shot and, and redo this. And then we got what we got, and the show was a hit. So that was interesting. But they kept that. They kept that opener. It was the same opener for both. Weird, yeah. Uh, versions of the, of the pilot. Yeah, they still mm-hmm. did. But look, like I said, looking back on it, these two go to a sperm bank to, you know, and they, they, but they don't end up finishing. They're like, ah, oh, this is weird. So they got, they got the hell out of there. You know what I mean? So that was kind of strange. Uh, but then, yes, then you see them coming home and they see Penny, you know, unboxing and stuff like that. And that's when they meet her for the first time. So that was a, a great start to the show. And then you eventually meet, you know, you meet Howard, you meet Raj. And we don't, like I said, we don't meet uh, Bernadette or Maya until, until or, or Amy too much later. But we talked about Howard's character, although we can get into him more. Raj's character. Mm-hmm. What, what are your thoughts on Raj's character? Well, I agree with you that I think he's the most underdeveloped. Yeah. Um, I think... I don't know. It almost felt like a throwaway. Like they didn't 
do as much with him. I don't know, which I don't know why. I don't like, know why. I think he's super talented. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. And, and I don't know why. Like, they just, I don't know. They had to leave someone as not having a girlfriend or having a relationship at the end. I it's okay. I get. There's always that no. person in the group. Yeah, like a friend's like, group who, like, you know, forever single or maybe, has struggled with it. I don't know. But I just, I don't know. Felt like, you you know, you knew Raj really wanted that. And yeah. you wanted that for him. <laughs> Out I of did, everybody. For him more than anybody yeah. else. Because he wanted it so badly. Yeah. And it just kind of felt shitty. Yeah. As a way to end the show that he's, you know, sitting there with Sarah Michelle Gellar, who he met on the plane. Yes. Right? And that it's, it's not... Like- yeah, it's yeah. not anybody, you know, it's not anybody important or long-term or right. anything like that. Yes, because we go back to the, the apartment at the end of this series, and he's yeah. still sitting on the floor alone. Yeah, and he had the he had the girl he almost married, Anu. He had Anu, he had and he Anu. had the other girlfriend, Emily, right? Yeah, the, oh boy. Yeah. So he's had some interesting girlfriends over she the She was a weirdo. Yeah. She was a weirdo. Yeah, but, she was. Um, yeah. But it was, no, I mean, but Anu was not like, you know, he, it was arranged. And I know that culturally that's the way that it was going to go, but it, it didn't work out. And she was yeah. not, she well, was not for she him. She wanted to move to London because her job offered her, uh, you know, they, they offered yeah. her a job in London. And he didn't want to go away from his friends. So I, you know, I get that because they wasn't like they had broken up or whatever. They, they'd been apart. Yeah. So it wasn't as solid. So why would you do that? If it's not that solid, why would you upheave your whole life? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'm sure there's tons of people who have done that, but you know, you know, in real life, well, and the I'm time, sure, and then get left with mixed results. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. So, there you go. All right, so let's talk about some other characters on the show. Um, Bernadette, we kind of talked to her about a little bit, but give me your thoughts on Bernadette. So, I I think you like her more as the show goes on. When they originally introduce her, she's very like simple almost i guess yeah. naive is probably a better way to describe it yeah. but very naive very you know i don't know i have a reverse effect on bernadette really i love her character but i like her a little less as the seasons go on wow. because she gets more and more bitchy yeah like she gets more and more like you know kind of like we talked about in raymond like you know calling you know howard a moron and she's always forever like dogging him or digging at him or calling him an idiot essentially and not that he's not he's played to be that way right he spends too much money he's kind of a goof and you know he his past and everything like that but like as the season goes on it seems like she gets more and more frustrated and tired of him in his ways and it comes out more you know but she's also you know and and that happens she gets more not that i have a problem with anybody being outspoken right clearly I live around a lot of outspoken people. That's okay. I'm outspoken as the day is long for the most part. But there's a tact to it. And she sort of loses that tact sometimes. She kind of just lets it fly and just like, I'm just, I am. You know, like, so for instance, when they have that talk with Penny and her boss, Stephen Root. Yeah. the whole company is just like, doesn't really, they're afraid of her. Yeah. Like, that's her character, right? She's like, you know, she took away the, the bathroom from the person in the wheelchair. What's she called? Wheels? Like, we shouldn't have called her wheels. Like, she no, came up with No, wheelchair, that. whatever. Wheelchair Sally. Wheelchair whatever. Sally, yeah. 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 Like, you shouldn't have called her that. She's the one who called her that, you know? And she still wanted to find out what was up with her bathroom, you know what I mean, at the end of it. She's like, they're they all paying for her coffee. And they were going to get her a, a, an espresso machine. She's like, where do we land on, our, on my bathroom? You know what I mean? Like, that's. The evolution of how she, you know, turned into that innocent person, that naive person, to like this, like controlling, you know, and, and the fact that she sounded like Howard's mother when she got angry. Well, I think that's. I mean, so I, that that's a trope, but I also Which think it's funny. like I a, do find that funny. But I also think it's a psychology thing. Like, if you don't deal with your issues, you marry someone who reminds you of your parents, yes. and that's that's definitely playing into that. Yeah. And then I think, you know, I mean, unfortunately, you know, with Howard's mother, the actress died. That certainly yeah, wasn't. Carolyn a, Sissy. Yeah, that certainly He's wasn't a plotline they were planning ever. to have. She's been but. around for so long, done so many things. Yeah, unfortunately, she passed away. Uh, it was the middle of the season, or right? Yeah, I think. Why? Because they, they kind of had to switch gears, or was it? I don't know if it yeah. was they were during the hiatus or something like that. Then No, it was um, It was the middle of a season. So they had to like, completely switch gears, and that, she was that away. episode still yeah. gets me. Yeah. She was away. Yeah, she was at his, his you know, her sisters or whatever in Florida. Yeah. And then passes away there because the actress had passed away in real mm-hmm. life. And that, that episode gets me every time. That was real. 
like that was like that felt really real for those actors, you know, because they had lost a friend. They mm-hmm. lost a, essentially like someone who would be their mother's age because she's been around forever. Like she, you know, she's been you know, old enough to be their mother. Um, so she, I guarantee you, like, and they, sometimes you hear them talking about her. She kind of was like the mom on the show, you know. So when they're going through that sort of, you know, everybody talking about Howard's mother, yeah, you kind of feel them talking about Carol Ann, yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, it's a very so you, emotional. You, scene. Yeah, it's very emotional. You just wonder how the hell they got through that. You know what I mean? They're close to this person for these many years, and all of a sudden she just passes away suddenly, like that. That's got to be super tough. Super tough. Uh, that's happened a few times, right? It happened in Monk, mm-hmm. right? When Doctor Doctor Kroger passes away, you know, mid, you know, mid, uh, not during the hiatus, during the summer break, that the actor mm-hmm. passed away. So very tough, very tough when you see them having to kind of go through that. Uh, news radio. Yeah, Phil Hartman. When Phil Hartman was murdered. You well, know. it was he didn't just pass away. No, I mean, no, he, he was, was murdered, murdered by his and it was really, really wife, tragic. Who, yeah, it was super tragic. Super, super tragic. You know, thank God. I mean, the only thing you thank God is the kids weren't in that home. Oh, my God. Yeah. Not that I want to go tangent on news radio or, or, or Phil Hartman, but, you know, God, you know, thank God those kids weren't at home. So God only knows what had happened. So, anyway, um, you know, so that episode was one of my favorites, but obviously because it's so real. Yeah. It's a hard I mean? sip. Absolutely. It's a hard sip. But I watch it. Like, I watch it all the time. Um, the final episode still gets me, even now. Yeah, but it's a good final episode. It's like, a great I, final episode. I, I we really talked like about it. this. Yeah. I really like it. It's a great episode because not only does Sheldon come to terms with kind of who he is and kind of like, you know, you get these 12 seasons of him being Sheldon and mm-hmm. being so self-absorbed and not giving a rat's ass how he says things to people to come into identification that he isn't, you know, the best, that he should be a little bit more mindful of how he speaks to his friends and mm-hmm. close people that are around him and that you know, he isn't always the easiest to be around. Um, and then the, that speech when they win, the, when him and Amy win the Nobel Prize and, and he, you know, and I'm okay right now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bust um, because usually I do. But when he gets each one of them to stand up, his friends, you know, and he talks about each one and, you know, and he talks about Dr. Rajesh Kruthapali and, when he always got to Howard, I lost it because you spent 12 seasons of him dogging Howard for just being an engineer with a master's degree and the only one in the group other than, other than Penny without a PhD. He forever dogged him about his, his life choice, his work, his, you know, his lack of PhD-ness, his lack of education, if you will. But then to call him astronaut Howard Wallowitz and give him that recognition was super cool. I thought that was a great way to you know kind of – round that character you know what i mean to pull it in for him and give him a, a little bit more depth to be like okay yeah he can so i think for it i think it was a great sitcom moment i think it's completely unrealistic what do you mean talk to me i don't think that someone who was that narcissistic and self-absorbed and um I get, I mean, I don't, I think Sheldon's portrayed to be on the spectrum in certain ways and maybe yes. it's, and I don't know that that's, but I just don't know that that character would have been able to really make that kind of a, no, I a, think a in development real life, and a leap. I think in real life, you're right. They would necessarily, how rare would that be? If mm-hmm. at all, that would kind of thing would happen. I think that's the magic of the sitcom because you want it to in 100%. real life. In real life, you want somebody who is that narcissistic, who is that mm-hmm. self-absorbed to have that epiphany of like, yeah. oh, I do have other people I should recognize mm-hmm. and let me actually, you know, publicly recognize them or, you know, kind of humble themselves a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's exactly what he did. And, right? and he I humbled think, himself to call Howard Ashton, Howard Wallowitz. You know? And I think, you know, it took 12 seasons of that with Sheldon because if you look at Sheldon from the very beginning yeah. to Sheldon, how he's you know, how he was at the end. Like, he's definitely still weird, but he's way less weird. Sure. He definitely evolved, um, you know, his relationship, not so much with Leonard, because I think that kind of wanted to stay the way it was forever. But when Penny came into the group and she became almost like a sister slash mothery type figure to him or helped him. And then, of course, when he got together with Amy. So dating Amy and then got married to Amy, that, you know, she influenced and changed him a lot. You know, she helped to ground him and bring him a little bit into somewhat of a reality, you know. So I think that definitely went a long way. Um, all right, so we're still on characters a little bit. Uh, talk to me. All right, so Kevin Sussman plays Stuart Bloom, mm-hmm. the comic book store uh, clerk owner. Wait, what is your take on Stuart? 
So, you know, you just continuously feel bad for Stuart. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just seems like nothing ever goes right for Stuart. The comic book store burnt down. Yeah. It was his fault. He had a hot plate going. You know, yeah. he shouldn't have. But yeah, still. But then he's, you know, then he's living with Mrs. Wallowitz. And then he's, then she dies. And then what does he do? And then he's still living there. But at the end, even Stuart gets a girl. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Even even he, poor Raj, even Stuart ends up with somebody. Um, you know, uh, the character was just, uh, first of all, I would love that comic book store. I'd love to own that comic book store, but not not in today's market. But oh, gosh. Um, I know, I know. But the, he's he's got every medical issue, no demand. He you know he's got he's taking every pill. Like that, the, he was the, he was a bit of a comic relief whenever he yeah. was there. Right? It was always my, one of my favorites part when he's when he puts he ends up getting Hallie to go to sleep. And they're asking how he did. And he's like, oh, people tell me my voice is soothing and puts people to sleep. And a few minutes later, he's just talking and he kind of looks and away. All, and they're all snoring. He's like, oh, come on. <laughs> they're all laughing. Like, that was really, that definitely identified with his character in some way. You know, it was funny. Um, all right. John Ross Bowie played Barry Kripke. Oh, Barry Kripke. Yeah. It, Leonard, uh, sorry, Sheldon's foil. Mm-hmm. Sheldon's arch nemesis at work. Um. He does not have a, a lisp in real life. So what did you think about the actor playing somebody with a lisp for all that time? He was on 25 episodes. He was on a good portion of the show. I didn't really know why it was necessary, Neither to do be I. honest. Neither do I, because at one point, even Sheldon like makes fun of him for it briefly, and then he makes him feel bad for it, and it's a whole thing, right? Which is, the, the show is, if you... The show was a huge hit, huge success, right? A huge success for CBS. But, like, there are a lot of people who didn't like the show because what it kind of did for people who are like them, not just people like Sheldon who are on the spectrum or things like that, but, like, you know, the sort of geek, nerd, contingent culture or whatever it is. Like, people feel like it it, it hurt the nerd or geek culture and not helped it. Because I know, I know, I feel, I feel you know, I don't I'm, know if I I'm, agree with that. I, I don't either, but I think people feel like, you know, were we laughing with Sheldon or were we laughing at Sheldon? You know, were we laughing with the geeks or were we the penny laughing at the geeks? No, I don't feel like I was laughing at people because I don't feel like I'm that kind of cruel person. And I also feel like I wanted to see them succeed. Yes. You know, when you're laughing at people, you don't, you don't get invested in them doing better. You don't get happy. Like when Howard met, met Bernadette and yeah. he like managed himself Stepped and became it up. Yeah. more like a reasonable human being. And a decent husband and a great father. Yeah. It was a really, it was a really good moment for that character. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was such a slime ball and because he didn't really know what else to be. Right. And then, you know. He didn't he, have a father. His father exactly. left when he was very young, so he had no guiding yep. force that way. And he found someone who accepted him, and then he was able to really kind of just be himself. Yeah. Which was really not a bad yeah, person. not so self-absorbed, because he was pretty self-absorbed. Well, know. and he still is, but. But he was able to pull it together in terms yeah. of being able to care for his mm-hmm. wife and his two kids mm-hmm. and things like that. I thought that was great. One of my favorite, little tangent, one of my favorite episodes was when um, his mom was on the toilet. And then she like fell, and he's this is when he's telling her about Bernadette. Mm-hmm. He's trying to like you know ask how you know, how the lunch was or whatever, and she yeah. falls, and he's like, oh, "I'm gonna break the door down." Yeah, and he's a short person, right? So he runs and jumps and hits almost the top of the door, but he yeah. gets some good height on jump. Yeah, and he slams it and just bounces off yep. the door. It's he's on the ground. He's like, "Mom, help!" <laughs> She's on the t- she fell. She's injured. He can't help him. He's like, "Mom, help me!" <laughs> he just heard his shoulder. Like that was completely his character, right? Mm-hmm. Self absorbed. Like his mother's in there, and he hurt his shoulders. So he needs her to help him. Uh, so that was one of my favorite parts of that of his character. Um, we're kind of rifling through him, but that's okay. Uh, some great, great guest stars mm. on this show. Will Wheaton. I love Will Wheaton. Seventeen episodes. As much as Laura Spencer, who played Emily. The weirdo girlfriend. Really? Gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they did, yeah. He was, Will Wheaton was a great, I thought he was fun. Oh, yeah. And, and I development him. of his character, mm-hmm. too. You know what I mean? Like, even though he was playing himself, mm-hmm. you know, it was obviously a comic version of himself where, you know, he was kind of that douche to Sheldon <laughs> because, you know, Sheldon was there, you know, in Sheldon's eyes, not Will's, but in Sheldon's eyes, they were arch enemies. But he's, he played on that. He broke up uh, Penny and Leonard. 
essentially at the bowling alley, mm-hmm. right? By putting thoughts in her head that she should, you know what I mean? So she ends up breaking up with him. And he, you know, makes Sheldon lose the, the Ka'a game. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, you know, so, but then by the end of it, he's a huge fan. They're friends. Yeah. And I yeah. thought that was really good. Um, so Will Wheaton was one of my favorite guest stars. We have um, Christina Br- Bransky, who Christy played Bates, uh, Leonard's, Leonard's mom. mom. Mm-hmm. Oh. I love her. She I love her. Beverly, Dr. Beverly Hofstadter. Oh, my God. That, I mean, the dynamic always, um, I don't know, that dynamic he had with his mother was always uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like, she's so, like, not just an arm's length, like, a whole body's length away. Mm-hmm. Like, you gotta stay away to that degree, you know, super rigid, super, you know, over, you know, achieving and, you know. Why are we celebrating his birthday? I'm the one who gave birth to him. It's my achievement, you know, not his. Well, in some ways, as someone who's given birth, I understand the philosophy. However, yes. give me a break. Yes. Give me a break. Right. Yeah. It is. I mean, she's she's definitely a foil of this overeducated woman, right, who wants to have her career as well. And, you know, I can... I, I can understand that, but what did, what did she? What isn't there something where she says he breastfed codependently or yes. something? Yes, <laughs> something like that, yes. which is like. And she was perfect. How else for that children role. breastfeed? She was perfect for that role. She, she was, I like Christine Bransky. Yeah, she's, she's very. Really good, I really super like talented, her. Talented, super talented. Um, Lori Metcalf, Sheldon's mom. Oh, as Mary Cooper. You know, I, I honestly, I wish she was the mom on Young Sheldon. I'd probably watch it more. I thought she was great. No, the woman who plays it is, is really wonderful. But I don't know. Something about the way Laurie Metcalf played that character. Like, you know, she was. See, but I think if you saw the mom on Young, Young Sheldon. I have. I've watched it. Originally play that character. Yeah. It would be different. Like, I think there's something, like, Mary Cooper is great. Yeah. And the way Laurie Metcalf played her is great. But I think that if you had originally, and I, I don't know who the woman is who plays on Young Sheldon, I don't ever think I've seen an episode. But, um, but you know, I think if you'd seen her up. originate you, you know it, who she was. If yeah, I, if I'm I sure. It, yeah. But I think if you'd seen her originate it, you'd think she was great, too. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Laurie, Laurie Metcalf has a certain way, or a certain way she said. Her sarcasm her mm-hmm. no nonsense like she but she's always been that like even, even on roseanne she was kind of the smart mouthy sarcastic no nonsense oh yeah yeah you know what i mean it's like she she just Who's she played, on roseanne? jackie yeah she was jackie the sister yeah so she plays that character really really well god we know. keep coming back to roseanne and i, I know that show. i know we, I this is not the first time the last it. episode we talked about I this i hated too. it oh yeah. god i hated roseanne i know i know i hated definitely. roseanne because of her yeah 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 and Becky. I didn't like Becky either. Oh, I thought I Becky was a beast. I know. I know. They say she's the same, but she's not the same. Did you ever see that one? Uh-uh. Not to dive tangent to Roseanne, but um, what was the youngest kid's name? Um, DJ. DJ, when they were a little older or whatever, and they did like a, a flashback, and I think John Goodman was pretending to be, like it was old, like he, he was DJ older or whatever, so yeah. he was pretending like he was him. And remember, she got it was changed out to be Sarah Chalk. No. So, anyway. yeah, so the original actress stopped playing her. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and yeah. Sarah Chuck, who was on Scrubs, she came in and played for a while. And, like, it was it was him with, like, a little pinwheel hat or whatever, and he's just sitting on the chair being like, they say she's the same. She's not the same. It's not the same. She's the, they're just commenting. And eventually they were both on it at one time, so that was kind of weird. Um, anyway, tangent. But um, anyway, so Sheldon's mother. Yeah. When they go to the – when she takes them out to the church. To the church, yes. Oh, yes. my God. One of my favorites. Mary Cooper here, yeah, calling in from Gamora, California. <laughs> Gamora, California. Thank you for giving me the strength not to cold cock him with my Bible. Well, for Shelly. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Lesson that is my Shelly. <laughs> thank you for the strength not to cold cock him with my Bible. That whole thing yeah. where she they she has them go through and ask Everybody, for things. Right. And then with Raj, he says, you know, he's... He's asking to lose those last five pounds. Yeah, and she's she like, says, I'm going to with the no talking to women thing. I'm going with the no talking to women thing. But and, he, and he whispers in Howard's ear. He's like, no, no, I'm sorry. You get one more sh- It's like, I just one more one wish. wish. I don't make the rules. Uh, and I like that, that he's obviously sitting there like, I'm just trying not to burst into flames right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's and, really. Yeah. I like the, there's another one too. And with, where, with Penny, she's like a little, you know what I mean? She's a little help with the Mary Magdalene when I have a mm-hmm. little chat with her. Yep. Yeah, the no. love a little too far on love thy neighbor. <laughs> the love thy neighbor, that's right. And what does she do with Leonard? She says she says something about Leonard too. I don't know. It was funny though. I remember she said something with Leonard too. 
Oh, I can't remember that one. That 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 was funny. But then, but she brings it back around when she's talking to Sheldon at the end, and she's singing him "Soft Kitty." Yeah, he's in bed because he was out in the rain and he's sick. And then she's just like, and he, she's in, and and but Leonard not, comes in. That's not that episode. It is that episode. It's that episode because there was a whole thing. Remember, he didn't want to go out with them. He wanted her to go to make you know dinner and stuff. Oh and, yeah, yeah. And to go to trains up. And so she, but she didn't want to. She wanted to go see sights, and that's where they mm-hmm. went to the church. At the end, he was out in the rain and got sick. And so she's in bed and she's rubbing the, you know, she's saying I'm soft kitty. And Leonard comes in. He's like, and they're like, you know, he say, he snaps at him. And she goes, well, that was rude. And Sheldon's like, yeah, I know, huh? She goes, mm. and this, so she gets halfway through soft kitty. And so she just continues on. He's like, hey, mom, when are you trying to pull from the top? <laughs> from and she the looks top. up at the ceiling going, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> She's looking at God going, what I'm talking about. <laughs> Cold cock, I'm just, that was perfect. This is what I'm talking about. Cold cock him with my Bible. <laughs> Cold cock him with my Bible. So, yeah, I liked her character. When when he gets the, when Sheldon gets the cats, he has the flower of cats. And this one's kind of zazzy. It's an interesting smell. You <laughs> Zazzle. <laughs> Zazzle. Oh, no. Or how about when the beginning, one of the first few episodes when, how does he get himself fired? But he does. And then he's weaving and he's yes. doing eggs with yes. Penny and experiments yes. and glow in the dark yes. fish. The and that's fish one of my and, favorite up, ones. It's one of the first on, ones. On the nightstand next to him. Yeah. The glowing fish. It's one there. of my favorite ones. Yes. And, and, <laughs> and Leonard calls her and has her come. And she's like, there's nothing that that boy has done that I have not seen. And then she comes in and he's weaving in a in a poncho. Yep. She's like, "Oh, you should have called sooner. <laughs> you should have called sooner." He's like, "I know." Yeah, he got all the cats. Oh my god, the the um, Doctor Richard Oppenheimer. That's right. This is the Manhattan Project. <laughs> that's right. That one was great. My favorite. Enrico Fermi. My favorite, favorite, favorite Sheldon is the Christmas episode. This the the, the Saturnalia Miracle. Oh, when oh. this was prior to my and Bialik, it was prior yeah. to Melissa Rauch. This is really towards the beginning, like first, second mm-hmm. season. When Penny hugs him. When Penny, well, no, he hugs Penny. That's right, because she he got him know the, what to the get Leonard her. Nimoy. She, yeah. she got him a gift, and he didn't know what to. He's like, he, he does not like the reciprocity of gift gifts. Like Christmas, uh, it's a you know, it's a pagan, you know, Saturnalia, you know, whatever. And so she gets him. So he goes out with Raj and Howard and buys like a ton of gift baskets from Bed Bath and Beyond. No, uh, Bath and Body Bath Works. And Bar, sorry, not, not a woman. I don't know those shows as much. Those shows as much. I don't do a lot of Bath and Body Works shopping. Um, so he buys like a ton of gift baskets. You have a wife. I know, but you don't shop there that often either. No, just on sale. That's right, as long as it's on sale. So because he wants to get basically monetize how much her gift is, and then go back and pretend he has stomach distress. Yeah. And go back and uh, get the, the one that's equal value. Yeah. And she gives him a napkin from the Cheesecake Factory. He's like, great. But she's like, look who it's signed for. It's signed by Leonard Nimoy, his hero. And then she's like, yeah, but that's not all. He's like, you know, he's, he's like, he wiped his, you know, mouth on it. So he has the. the <laughs> Leonard the, Nimoy's the DNA. DNA. All he needs is a healthy ovum. Yeah. He created his own Leonard Nimoy. She's like, I'm only giving you the napkin, <laughs> Sheldon. <laughs> but his. I mean, he definitely deserved an Emmy for that acting. When he opens that and he starts to tremble and his lip starts, he starts like swallowing his lip and, and doing that trembling. He's like, I have the, you know, DNA of Leonard Nimoy. Like that whole time was perfect, pitch perfect acting. And when he comes out with the, um, the 12 gifts, with the 12 gift gift baskets, baskets, I like, know, I know it's, it's not, not enough. enough. So he hugs her and she looks over at Sheldon. And she's like, look, uh, it's a Leonard. Leonard. Look, it's a Saturnalia miracle. <laughs> That he's like Sheldon's hugging me, and he holds up his mug. It's a Saturnalia miracle. That is that is a lovely moment. That is one of my favorite moments in the entire series. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. All right, continuing on. Uh, who are some of your other favorite standouts? We had Brian Posen as Bert. Um, what did you think of the whole Priya area? I was not a fan of the no, Priya. I didn't like time. Priya. I didn't like Priya. I felt like she was, and they played her up to be like she was very much like a. Um, you know, she was there to change him. Like the episode mm-hmm. where she buys him all new clothes yes. and wants him to wear contacts. Yes. And I just, you know, it wouldn't have been bad to have her in the group, but then she wants him to get rid of Penny. Right. And I don't know. There's just, I, I was not a Priya fan. No. No. I, I, I always struggle with any show that does that. We have the two main characters, you know, that they're going to get together, right? We This on The Office, right? And then there's things that get in between them. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, in the office is Jim and Pam, and there she's married. She's engaged to Roy, but then they break up, but then he's marrying. He's not marrying. He's dating, you know. Um, Karen Filippelli. Karen Filippelli. Uh, you know what I mean? Like that, that, that always. So that's the same thing, right? It, right. They're, they're together, and then Penny, you know, he's dating her, so now she wants him. Penny wants Leonard, yeah, yeah. but can't have him because he's with Priya. Ugh, I have a hard time with that. Well, I mean, it's a trope, right? Like they have to, there's only so much they can do with happiness, right? There's more that can be done with people where they're unhappy. So it's multiple things, yeah. but um, yeah, I know it's hard. Yeah, it's interesting. But I, I'm, I did I'm glad not, she didn't last that long. No, I didn't she like not, Priya. No, she did not last that long at all. Um, she was 12 episodes, so she was basically in a season, essentially. She was played in a season. One of my favorite guest stars is Bob Newhart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, it's Professor Arthur, Proton. Arthur Jeffries, Professor Proton. Oh, even after they quote unquote killed him off, and yeah. he kept reappearing as like a Jedi mm-hmm. ghost for Sheldon to see. I think that was dream. wonderful. What a way to keep bringing him back! Yeah, you know, it was oh really well done. That, that was that was imaginative, um, and it just and the way he played it. I mean, come on, it's Bob Newhart. He's been around forever, right? Everybody's favorite stutterer. He's been around forever. He's such a genius. His acting on that show is just like he was the he was Professor Proton. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You didn't see Bob Newhart. He played that character so well and just kept coming back. Like, why the hell am I here? Like in Leonard's in Sheldon, I keep doing that. In Sheldon's dreams, his his mentor, his guide, was still annoyed that he was mm-hmm. there talking to yeah. him. Like, why why don't we meet in a deli? Why? Don't, and he tries you know, to stab himself with the, <laughs> the lightsaber. <laughs> the He's like, that oh, didn't work. You know, like that was that was perfect. You know, like the writing was so wonderful. Like he didn't just help him, right? He didn't just be that mentor character. He was still just annoyed. <laughs> like, why am I dressed like this? Like it was like the person was really living. But Sheldon didn't know him that well. No, right? but like he, I think know, but I think Sheldon felt very close to him because he was something that Sheldon could hold on to growing yeah. up in East Texas. Yes. The Lone Star State. That should be its Yelp rating, according to Sheldon. <laughs> I love that one. That should be its Yelp rating. <laughs> it was great. But, and that was like the episode where he dies and Sheldon doesn't go to his funeral, mm-hmm. right? And he's, because they're watching Star Wars, they're reviewing all the Star Wars movies. But then he gets upset and he goes to take a, he goes, he falls asleep. And he comes back and then he ends up hugging Leonard because he was very sad that mm-hmm. he passed away, but he had a hard time dealing with it and coming yeah. to terms with the fact that, you know, this this mentor that he meant so much to him had passed. Because his own father dies, like, right? Like when he was younger. Yeah, when he was his young. His father passes away, although I don't know. I know on young Sheldon, they're kind of like eventually going to have to deal with that mm-hmm. because it's canon, like essentially, and like the, the, the affair that he supposedly has, they're kind of dealing with that now from what I understand. And how it kind of like didn't quite happen the way he thought it happened. Mm. Like they're kind of retconning it to be like maybe his father wasn't such of a douche. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like they're having a show and the guy's on the show. Like you actually yeah. have to go through that. So mm-hmm. it was kind of like one of those he doesn't quite remember it exactly. Because, mm-hmm. you know, he was a kid, even though he's a genius and eidetic memory. He wasn't there for all of it. No. And you can't he didn't know see and exactly. hear all of it. Everything exactly. that went on. Exactly. So you're going to see other parts of it, I guess, in that show. So that was kind of an interesting way yeah. to do it. Yeah. yeah. That was a, that was an interesting way to introduce the show when they had that sort of when they had the um the videotape. Yes. Of him talking, you know, mm-hmm. you know, talking to his older self and it's it's the kid, I forget his kid's name, who plays him as the young Sheldon. Like that was a great way to spin mm-hmm. off the show. And you see that I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. That was really good. I like when shows do that. The office tried to do that spin off with uh Dwight in the farm. They didn't take Remember that farm episode? No. Oh, I remember the farm episode. Yeah, but they, there were, was... they were going to make a show from that. They were going to make like the Shroot Farms or whatever. They're going to make oh, the, the show called the Farm or whatever, and they didn't end up picking it up. Anyway, um, so there you go. <clears throat> so Bob Newhart, still one of my favorite guests of mm-hmm. all times in the show. Um, who else? Who else did you like as uh, as a guest on the show? What do you say? What are your favorite moments? Like, we talked about favorite some favorite scenes, but do you have other ones or favorite episodes in general? I There's like, a lot to choose from. No, I I really like Sheldon and Amy's wedding. Um, I like all the wedding ones. I think the um, I I like Bernadette and Howard's wedding, for sure. Um, 
I also like the mother's on the roof and the father. He's like, yo, he's gonna be able to catch a football. Uh, yeah, I like that. She's I the only like, one who gets to yell at me. If you want to come closer, yeah, I like that wedding. I I like I liked both of the wedding ones. Penny and Leonard's wedding, I wasn't thrilled with. Um, no, oh, you mean the well, well the the eloping or the actual wedding wedding? The eloping. Okay. The eloping. Yeah. What yeah. about their their wedding when they? Redid I liked them? their actual wedding. Yeah. Um, but there are. You know, I liked yeah, Sheldon and Amy's honeymoon also. Yes. I thought that was a really well done yep. one. I don't know. There were so many. I do. I am very partial to the one where they are um, going to the Comic-Con in Bakersfield. And they're all dressed up as the Star That's Trek landing like my party. my least favorite. That is so awkward. I feel so bad, I but it's feel, so it's like the most realistic. Yeah, but, but I, I feel, feel yeah, so bad. I feel for terrible them. Like for that's, them. I do. That's a cringe episode for me. Kind of like Scott's Tots in the Office. Oh, like that's God, a Scott's cringe, yeah. cringe episode for me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I feel, but I feel like it's really realistic. It is. It's yeah. super. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, still being a, a comedy show, but it still feels you like know, that. You know, another one that I really like is um, when Penny is the episode where she gets absorbed in the, um, it's it's the world, it's not mm. World of Warcraft, yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. that's what it's supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, World of Warcraft, she gets yeah. absorbed in playing the online game. She gets absorbed and gets playing. She's got yeah. the Cheeto in her hair. And she, yeah. 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 And then, you know, she eventually is able to come out of it, yeah. you know, and do. Yeah, because Howard's there. Because Howard's yeah. in there basically trying to get her to go have, like, you know, cyber sex or something, like go to yeah. the bar. And she's like, ew. She realizes it's him. I need help. I need help. She, she throws the laptop down. She's like, ew, I got, I'm out. Yeah, and that was a perfect way to do it. Yeah, it was, a it was way to get her up to bounce her back no, out. It was, it was, but I, I did like that one because I think that when people struggle sometimes, um, with their identity, that's yeah. You know. Yeah. So talk about that. Some of the themes, the different themes in the show that you you noticed that you that you really liked, mm-hmm. or you know that you thought they did well. I definitely noticed like Penny's. I, I wouldn't say like struggle for identity, but I, I guess that's fair. Like, you know, she comes out there to be an actress and she has to accept, like, you know, she did this hemorrhoid commercial that's as big as she's going to make it. Yeah. And, you know, she's in the, what what is it? What's the movie? The ape the, movie? The, the, the eating gorilla. The gorilla. The gorilla. Eat, movie, yeah. the gorilla. Yeah. Serial apis. The serial apis. That's, that's serial right. And apis. serial apis too. And serial apis too. And, um, you know, she's in that and, you know, she has to accept it and like move on with her life and, you know, be, you know, take a, take a real job. And I think, you know, watching her mature in that way, the part, the time I had the hardest time with her is when she was like, I'm just going to quit my job at the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. And I'm going to go for this full time. And Leonard, you know, trying to support that, but not really believing it. Right. And having a hard time with that and then her getting mad at him and me feeling like, what is the matter with you? Also, how are you paying for your apartment? Well, that's it. I mean, there's obviously, that's another whole part of any sitcom. But, it's, you know, this was one of them that people really kind of latched on to is the economics of a show. Like, a lot of shows have that issue, right? And economics oh, of a show sure. is how do these guys who, you know, work at Caltech, they're physicists, and they don't make a ton of money. They're not even tenured professors. Where are they getting the money to live in this apartment? She, in her as well. Right, she's single and she lives in this apartment. Now it's not as big as the guy's apartment, obviously, but it's still a pretty nice apartment. In where were they? They are. Um, oh God, now the name of the, the area. What, what part? Pasadena. Pasadena. Thank you, Pasadena. Right, it's not that cheap. It's it's California. First of all, California is not cheap to live in at all. But you know, I mean, some parts are more expensive, like San Francisco. But see, how does she afford that on a you know on a cheesecake factory? Salary, and she's not a great waitress either, so it's not like she's making a ton of tips, <laughs> right? And that was, I love how they played that, by the way. Um, you know, so yeah, the economics are tough, but even the guys, right? The two scientists, you know, research scientists, essentially, what kind of salary are they pulling down? And they have this beautiful apartment and all this stuff, like the money they have to spend on collectibles and comic books and all these kind of things, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, but I, I and, think... And they eat out constantly. Like, you n- barely ever see them cook anything. Yeah. A little bit of breakfast every once in a while. They made, like, you know, some French toast or whatever. But they have, like, their pizza one night, their Thai food another night. Like, their Chinese... Like, they had a regiment of every night. It was, like, a mm-hmm. different night. They'd eat out. You eat out is expensive. Mm-hmm. What the hell do they afford? Plus, they, you know, have to buy, like, they bought lunches at work, too. Yeah. In the cafeteria. I don't imagine that food's free. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how that works when you work at a, at a place like that, but... 
You know, I think, but I think it can make that argument with any show, right? Like Friends in particular, how did Monica and Rachel fall afford that apartment? Right. Um, you know, any of those things. I think, I think the part it got, the, the time when it got the most ridiculous for me though was when, like I could, I could somehow, you know, abandon reality enough to yeah. believe that she could figure it out with the Cheesecake Factory and a few acting gigs and maybe she made a little bit more money on this yeah. or whatever. But then she had no money and she was just taking acting classes and you know, doing, yeah. and doing yoga. Yeah. And what? Leonard's paying for two apartments? No. Right. Well, that's it, right? So that, that was interesting. And, yeah, it's kind of hard to get enough, suspend enough disbelief that that's totally possible. So I do like when they call it out, like even in a joking way, when they kind of like make reference to stuff like that on a show. And they like kind of they almost point out the absurdity of the situation that they're trying to create. So I don't know if you remember in Friends, the one episode when like I think it was Rachel or someone was just like I think my boss is gonna be pissed at me, you know, because I'm running late. He's like, yeah, because you're all sitting around here on ten o'clock on a Wednesday after morning. Yeah, you know, like oh shit, yeah, we all have to go to work. You know what I mean? Like Joey's just like, yeah, you all sitting around here at the coffee shop at ten o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday. You know what I mean? Like that was like called out because they're always there at the coffee shop. Like. When is this? When are you sitting there? Mm -hmm. Don't you have to work? Don't you have to do things? I say that here at the apartment. And I know it's the pandemic, so people like mostly a lot of people are working from home. But I leave here at 11, 30, 12 o'clock in the morning, you know, in the afternoon sometimes, and the parking lot's full. Like, don't these people have to work? <laughs> Does anybody work around here? Nobody leaves. All these apartment, all these all these cars are still here. Don't you have to go somewhere? But I know a lot of people are working from home mm -hmm. these days, so I have to kind of justify that in my head. I'm like, I'm leaving, and I'm leaving late. Like, a lot of people like yourself leave 8, mm -hmm. 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep. 12, 30, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, you're still here. Yeah, no so kidding. You go to work. Now the good spots are open. I'm like, go to work. Oh, you and the good spots. You know me in the parking. It's still a bane. Which was a great episode, by the way, in Big Bang Theory. Oh, when Howard the, got the, the spot. Howard got the, yeah, and got Leonard, Sheldon's and spot. Leonard wanted the spot back, even though he doesn't own it. No, he can't Sheldon. drive. So I keep doing that. And Sheldon, I tattooed on my forehead. Sheldon wants his spot back. Even though he doesn't drive, he doesn't have a license, he doesn't know how to drive, but it's the fact that it was his spot. Mm -hmm. Just like the couch, it's his spot. I want my spot. That, that was a really funny episode. He's in my spot. He's in my spot, and Howard ends up naked on his couch with his laptop on his junk. Yeah. He's wiggling in the chair, and he ta end up, oh, ends up gross. taking the couch cushion. Sheldon takes the couch cushion to the cleaner. He's like, he's, like, he's like, how long do you need, like a week, two weeks? He's like, this is really in, in there deep. And he looks at the little kid behind him, he's like, that's your son. Well, I got a laptop. It's only been like less than 10 minutes on, a, on an astronaut's junk. <laughs> that was, I remember uh, that. That was perfect. That mm -hmm. was wonderful. So that was that was a fun episode. He takes his Iron Man helmet, and it just goes on from there. I thought that was a really good episode. It was a really well done one, yeah. yep. Um, some other favorite characters on the show. I like the way Steven Root played her... Uh, uh, that's boss. Mm -hmm. He was scared of her. I thought that was funny. And then, like, he finds out, like, Penny's scared of her, too. He's like, you're scared of her, too? That was really good. I enjoyed that one. Um, what are you, some of your other favorite parts of the show? So, I I mean, I'm a, I am like the beginning episodes. Some of the beginning episodes are almost my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, Why? Well, because it's, it's just the five of them, right? And it's very tight, and mm -hmm. it's very, like, they're just interacting with each other. And I think some of the... I don't know. It's just really simple, mm -hmm. right? And it, you know, and that's life, right? Like that's the evolution of life. Things yeah. start out simple with a group of friends, and then people have partners and spouses and things like that. Right. And so it's the natural evolution of things. It makes things more complicated, but it is. I I enjoy that. Like when I go back to those episodes, I enjoy the beginning ones. Yeah. Very much. See, that's funny. I, I love the later ones. I know. I don't know why. I, I mean, maybe it's because you know there there is a group. Like the group is bigger, right? And there's more dynamics, and people do find love, and they get married, and you know what I mean. When they start to have the kids, it's like okay, you know what I mean. Like you know when Bernadette and Howard start having their kids, like that doesn't bother me or anything like that. But I like it like right before then, that time right before they have the kids. That was that's my sweet spot. Well, I think too having having a child, right? You realize how unrealistic it is, everything that they still continue to do yeah. with a baby. Yeah. With two. two. Yeah, yeah. With two. She has a second one like almost right oh, away. Oh my God. Yeah. I don't know how people do that. No, I know. I know. But you know, 
I don't know. And, and the kids weren't, again, the kids weren't really much of an issue on that show, after, even after they were born. Like, there's a couple episodes where, like, you kind of deal with them after that. It's almost like in Every Love Freeman, they're not very existent on the show. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you certainly don't see them. You don't really ever see the kids, per se, like, grown up or growing or anything like that. You know, like, once they're done, it's like, the, where are they? <laughs> where are the kids? They're always sleeping or in the other room or something. Yeah. So, and that's fine. Again, it doesn't need to be, but I don't want to. You know, a show like that to turn into being about the kids. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really help anything. Um, so pretty interesting, uh, uh, like, guest stars, I thought. You know, where they had, like, LeVar Burton guest starred a bunch of times. Um, Brett Spiner was in there. Obviously very, you know, like very geek-centric, right? The yeah. Like, people, things like that. Uh, I always found that. Uh, Stephen Hawking was a huge. Yeah. Seven episodes, but, like, they talked about him constantly on that show. Sure, because Sheldon was obsessed. Right, with, with Stephen Hawking. I thought that was in Howard worked with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of my favorites when we had that little remote control, Stephen Hawking, and did, did like wheelies. Remember he oh, was yeah, yeah. spinning it around. Everybody's telling him that's in poor taste. It's really, you know, it's really bad taste to have that. And then at the end of the at the end of the show, Stephen Hawking's like, I always wanted like a remote control version of myself, like a little toy version of myself. And, Le- and uh, the Leonard goes to, uh, I think it was, I think it was Amy. He's like, don't tell Wallowitz. <laughs> don't tell Howard he said that. He's like, gotcha. Definitely. Because <laughs> everyone was telling him it was bad, bad taste. So that was that was my fight. So what is your, we talked about favorites. What's your least favorite episode or arc? Priya, Priya comes up there. Yeah. Um, Raj's girlfriend, Emily. Led by Laura Spencer. Oh. Oh, she was so weird and creepy. I thought she started out good, but then they started, yeah, they started making her weird, right? Yeah. She liked horror stuff. She likes really weird things. She'll sit in a cemetery for hours. Like, she was kind of like, you know, this. she's a dermatologist. <clears throat> but it just, she, her character didn't match, I guess is kind of a weird way to put it. But, like, it just didn't, it didn't seem genuine mm-hmm. to me. Her, her, her likes or dislikes, her, her way she was, it just didn't match the person. For some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, and I think the episode that I probably like the least is the one where she, you know, Raj tells her that he and Penny had a thing mm-hmm. and, you know, and then she's so terrible about it. And it's yeah, just so really stereotypical, like woman, like yep. it's just awful. Whereas it's like, grow up. I mean, you know, he might have been with her once. He's with you now. Yep. Deal with yourself. Yeah. Like, I just can't. And like, then not to say that Raj helped the matter because he, like, overplayed for, what actually for sure, happened. He blew up. For sure. You know what I mean? He definitely gave it more gravitas than it actually needed to mm-hmm. what actually happened between them. Because really nothing happened between them. Right. But he didn't want to, like, let that part of his manhood go to say right. that nothing happened. Right. He wanted that notch on the bedpost even though there wasn't anything to notch. You know what I mean? Right. But I do, I mean, that she was probably one of my least favorite parts of the whole Although thing. she gave me one of my favorite quotes or lines in the show. It's not her indirectly, but when Raj and Howard are watching, what were they watching, like, Song. Night of a Thousand Death. Murders or yeah, something. something like that. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty famous, actually, movie. I can't remember what it is. And he's just like, and he goes through the whole list of everything. He's like, I'm just going to say it. That's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> like the way he says it in the accent, of course. Just gonna yeah. go, I'm just going to say that. The pain, the pain and look on his face. Mm-hmm. He's just like, I can't believe I'm watching this. I can't believe this woman likes this stuff. I'm just going to go out and say it. It's not okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of my favorite lines. No. Definitely one of my favorite Raj lines. Yeah. But he was such an interesting character. I mean, like, metrosexual, basically. You know what I mean? Like, he liked, you know, the, the geek stuff, but he also knew how to, like, you know, throw an outfit together. But not really. Yeah. But he thought he did. You know, yeah. his, his wardrobe was interesting. Um, but, you know, he liked girls night and he you know what i mean he liked a good you know spritzer and you know what i mean like he was definitely in that way you know what i mean uh so interesting character i i, I appreciate his character a lot i like a good fruity foo-foo drink uh, afraid to me you yes know me. you do honey not a, you know not a beer person i'd rather you nope, know not even close no i'd definitely rather you know an apple teeny versus a yeah but I it's out there i wouldn't call you metro no definitely not no i wouldn't either but you know I, I, I get that. I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't. I don't I'm even. Not trying know to insult that's... anybody. Or... No, no, neither am I. I don't even know if that's like. A, I don't know. Something not a road listen. we should go down. No, definitely not going to go down the road because I don't want to insult anybody. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Anyway, so I digest. So 
I did like I did like his character though. I I, I wanted more for him at the end of the day. Me too. I really Me too. wanted more for him. I wanted more for Stuart, even though he got the girl at the end. I still wanted him to get I a think, win more often. I don't know. You know I, mean? they I kind think of beat on him a lot. I know, but I think considering how Stuart's like arc in general was, yeah. I think he turned out okay. He did. He did. I love the episode. When it was the, when when Bernadette was giving birth and they all end up at the, they actually end up at the hospital mm-hmm. and they're all going through this sort of like look at where we ended up you know look at how far we've come and Raj's like all right fine I get it I'm a loser like I'm still where I am I've no no girlfriend and like but like but still Stuart is lower. He's like, oh, Stuart, he is like, great. I'm just as good. I have an astro, I have a PhD in astrophysics, and I'm every bit as good as the geeky owner of a comic book store. <laughs> and that kind of sets off that relationship because there's a relationship struggle between Raj and Stuart because they're both like vying for the attention and love at Howard's place mm-hmm. between the, the baby. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, you know, that little bitter, little titter tatter they have back and forth. And he's just like, I'll paint it. He's like, just because you're an artist, just because you're starving doesn't make you an artist. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. He's like, yeah. just because I look sickly doesn't mean I'm starving. Um, but then, like, at the, at the hospital, and like, Raj goes away to get, like, candy out of the machine. It doesn't actually come out. And he comes back. He's like, he's like, did you, did you basically, did you turn your life around while you were gone? <laughs> Two seconds. Stuart, like, jabs him really quick. He's like, really? Did you, did you turn your life around while you were gone? Oh, God. Yeah, that was really good. And then Penny gets two candies out of the machine. He's like, yeah, one of those was mine. It didn't fall. And she throws that. And his hand just goes out and it hits him in the chest. He completely messes the catch. Oh, that was that was fun. So many great moments. Mm-hmm. It's a really, it's a really, really well done what, show. What are, what are some of the other favorite moments of the show? I know I'm putting you on the spot but because there's yeah. so many. No, it's, and it's, it is hard in the, you know, to come up with them. Um. I do. So when um, Amy and Sheldon break up and she's dating um, Steve Merchant yes. for a while. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. I do like that she, you know, stands up for herself and is able to, um, you know, make make good decisions. I, did, I felt bad for her, though, because then at the end of the day, he's just in love with, with Sheldon. And all he wanted to talk about was Sheldon. I know. You know what I mean? I was like, oh. Not that I wanted her to end up with him. I wanted her to end up with Sheldon, obviously, but... Just like that, even that, even then, she can't get a win. Like, this guy just constantly talks about her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He wants to be with him and meet him and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was, well, I felt bad. I felt bad. Yeah, he played Dave Gibbs. A couple episodes, three episodes. Three episodes. Mm-hmm. Did really well. Uh, a lot of, again, a lot of great Kathy Bates was on the show. She played Amy's mother. I thought yes. she was perfect. Because we hear about, so we hear about, so this show had a couple that, you know, at least the mother, uh, Howard's mother, was that character like you hear. Mm-hmm. You know, and then we've we've seen that before, right? And Frasier, we never see Maris. Yeah. Right? Even as far back as Home Improvement, right? Yep. Remember the, 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 the mm-hmm. oh, what's his name? Um, the neighbor, Wilson. The neighbor, Wilson, the neighbor. We, we see him, but we don't ever see him. He's always, you know, head behind the fence. He has this little fisherman hat, you know what I mean? So that, I, I, you know, that's always a weird little trope that they do mm-hmm. you know these uh, uh um even back as cheers we never meet vera we see That's her right. once yep. but she's covered in pie because they throw a pie and it hits her mm-hmm. before you see her so all you see is this person with the hair and a white you know cream pie in her face so that that's far back as she, and maybe it's before that. I don't I'm know. Sure it's far back as I remember as Cheers yeah. the first time I saw that kind of. I'm sure it happen. goes before that. Yeah, we never see a character that they talk about or a mm-hmm. major character on the show essentially. Mm-hmm. So you never meet Howard's mother. Uh, if, you know, physically you never see her, but you can't. They talked about her like she was a thousand pounds and like the size of a house. Like you can't. Yeah, how are you, you gonna make that? Like, like, yeah. how, how are you gonna make, make that, that work? work? And like, you know, it's like okay, they're exaggerating this mm-hmm. whole time. But you meet Amy's mother and father, paid by um, Penn Teller. Um, <laughs> I mean, and you need to hear him talk, but like so beaten down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just that typical is like beats him that she runs the show so like, it's funny to see like it, it, that was not an exaggeration i don't think they ever exaggerated her like anytime amy ever spoke of her mother yeah you know what i mean it, it's she, kathy bates played that they, they they definitely took her out and said like, yep this is who she is this is who we've been talking about for years mm-hmm. let's, keep let's you that go for character. it let's give let's you that go character. for it and yeah. she was she really was mm-hmm. <laughs> i do like when mark hamill um facilitates uh facilitates 
presides, I guess is the yeah. right word, over their wedding. Yes. I think that's really adorable. Yes. I love that. He's like, Mark, Mark Hamill's here. And Howard set it up. Mm-hmm. He's like, great. After this is done, I have about 10,000 things for you to sign. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And Will Wheaton's kind of pissed off that he's not. Oh, because Will Wheaton he, was supposed to do he it. He was. And he, he had all the notes. He's like, oh, great. Thanks. And he takes the notebook. These will come in handy. <laughs> and Mario just takes it. I thought that was perfect. Yeah. That was good to see. Mm-hmm. That was good to see. Yeah, they definitely pulled in a lot of guest stars for the show. Mm-hmm. Dean Norris, he's a Hank Schrader from uh, Breaking Bad. He was the uh, oh, he was the, yeah. the, the, the Colonel Richard Williams. That's right. That's right. That, when they know, were working on the, um, the gyroscope. The gyroscope. Yeah. yeah, that was Dean Norris. So good to see him. Um, yeah, yeah. I just I don't know. I, I'll rewatch the show over and over and over again. I still watch. I still love it. Um, you know, I know how people some like I said, I know how people feel about the show or the what it portrays. I don't know. I identify with them enough that like I don't laugh at them. You know what I mean? I started to watch the show because my father has well, or w- was working towards his PhD in physics, and he would watch it and say he knew someone who was like every single one of those guys. Yeah, and that you know, and so we would watch it mm-hmm. and he, he loved it. And it, it was, it was hysterical. Yeah. It was hysterical. Like yeah. I found it funny in ways that like, you know, you rooted for all these characters, but they were also relatable. Yes. You know, and 12 seasons. Yeah. It's a long running show. And I don't think it lost it by the end. I think it definitely mm-hmm. went out on a high, mm-hmm. you know, and we'll talk, we can talk about that. You know, we know, we kind of mentioned it before that, you know, Jim Parsons just kind of, he was done. Like he, he's gone on record. He's like, yeah, not that he didn't love it. Not that he didn't love the character, love the mm-hmm. show. He's kind of like, all right, I think it's time to put it to rest and like, you know, mm-hmm. let it end on a high note. Let yeah. it end, let it end here. And, and I think it's beating it into the ground for the next, because they would have kept going. Well, God knows how long they would have kept going. Well, and I think that that's always the, you know, the, the thing with shows, like, when do you end it? Like, yeah. you can always say it's too soon or it's too this or it's too that. It's hard to hit that, but you always want to try to go out on a high note, yeah. whether it's with your career or a show. So or... what are some shows, do you think, both sides, shows that ended on a high note or some ends that some shows that just dug it into the ground and probably should have ended a couple of seasons? Like, even though I love The Office, and I do appreciate the last couple of seasons, after Steve Carell left, yeah. it was a tough go. Uh, and agree. they knew it would be, but they I think they did the best with what they had. Yeah. You know I what think, I mean? Yeah. I think they did. I think they definitely did the best with what they had. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we can talk about this when we do Cheers, but I think I far preferred Shelley Long yes. to Kirstie Alley's character. And I think a lot of the later years of Cheers oh. were just painful we will talk about this when we talk about cheers but her sort of you know christy alley's sort of deterioration of that character like she started yeah. out super strong like the first mm-hmm. couple episodes where she was very much in charge and then just completely turned out to be this oh. money grubbing trying to marry the rich guy you know narcissist and just you know just a, no spine no backbone but that's not who she was that first couple episodes when she was introduced on the show. No. And maybe they people thought she was too harsh. So they yeah, lightened her up a little just, bit. But I think yeah, they went completely. And that last season was way too much of her chasing. Oh, chasing. Ch- when they were trying to have a baby. And ugh, oh, yeah, it was, it, it was, it was tough. It was, that was definitely a, at least a couple, two or three seasons too much. At yeah. least that's just that last season. That last season should not have happened. Yeah, I agree. I enjoyed the ending. And we'll talk about this again. We'll talk about this on the show. But I enjoyed the ending of that show. Mm-hmm. Right, I enjoyed the way they ended the show in the final episode. I thought that was well done, mm-hmm. much like uh, Big Bang Theory. I love the way they ended that show. Um, everybody's still together. Yeah, well, this is a theme we've talked about this before. It's a theme. At the end of the day, everybody's still together. They haven't broken apart. Not mm-hmm. like Frasier. Not like Friends. Mm-hmm. Everybody kind of almost almost everybody goes their separate ways. Right, Monica and Chandler are Chandler are off to the the suburbs, and you know what I mean, like. I don't like that. You spend this much time. We talked about yeah. this before. You spend that much time with people, you know, as part of your, you know, like I said, they're in your living room night after night, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden they're just gone. The they're o- broken up. It's, it's hard enough when the show ends. Yeah. And you're not going to see new episodes mm-hmm. of these people. But then to think at the end of this day, this fictitious world is now broken up. The only show that I really, I think really perfectly timed the the ending I think it was Breaking Bad. Yes. 
yes, they absolutely went on the high note and they ended it. That is, to me, one of my favorite endings. Yeah. One of the best endings to any show, yeah. comedy, drama, whatever. Wrapped like, it all up. Like wrapped it was, everything yeah, up. No, it was to be really, up. really well done. Every single thing, but enough. I mean, mm-hmm. almost everything was wrapped up at the end mm-hmm. of that last two episodes. Um, but super strong. You know, you knew at the end of the day he had to die. Like, the, the just, mm-hmm. you knew he had to go out. He had cancer. Like, it came back. The show started with the fact that this was a finite period of time. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't going to go on forever. Mm-hmm. Like, you knew this was only going to be a snapshot of a few years because that's all he was really given. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even given a few years. But then, like, you know, the remission and for a little bit and then boom, sure. it came back again. So, <clears throat> so you knew it had to. But... Yeah, I think that was the strongest ending of any show. Satisfying. Super yeah. satisfying. Yep, I agree. He essentially wins, even though he shouldn't really win because he's really a terrible person at the end of the day, but he wins. Yeah. Right? Even though he dies, he still wins. Mm-hmm. You know, so that was a great way to end it. You know. Um, what else? Like, you know, we've talked about this before. Loss was like a really bad way to end that show. I've never even seen one episode. Uh, it's a good show, which is sad because I'd, I'd love to say, let's watch that show together because it was one of my favorite shows. Like I loved when that show was on. The mysteries, the uh, the intrigue, the, the way it was written. You know, a, it was some of the seasons were too long, so it was a bunch of filler episodes that they didn't necessarily need. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just then they just kind of like almost Game of Thrones it at the end. Like they kind of just oh. gave you this ending. And you're like, ugh, really? It's whatever it was, seven years. We really built to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, I guess. Could have been better. Could have been better. Another ending that I particularly liked was Mad Men. Yes. Um, I thought Mad Men was really well done yep. um, with all of that that they went through, but I really appreciated the ending and liked actually all of the, pretty much the ending for all of the characters. Yeah. Um, but I, I loved it. I loved the ending, but I struggled with it. Like the fact that they get bought out, I think they turn over to McCann Erickson. You know what I mean? And they don't really, because you spend all those seasons with them trying to make a go of their own company, mm-hmm. right? And at the end of the day, they still have to sell out to the bigger corporation and go and go work for them. And you know, and it's and it's a shit show over there, right? Like the way they treat Joan, the way they treat everybody. You know what I mean? Like it's still like yeah, but Joan was finding her way. Yeah, Joan was finding her way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it, you know, I think it was all, it all worked out. It definitely worked out. I love that with with Don and he basically you know quote unquote creates that Coca Cola commercial like that's what you led to believe that that that's his thing I thought that was really well done yeah I thought that was really well done yeah yeah I like that um yeah I've talked we talked about Frasier um we talked about uh, Everybody Loves Raymond that was a good ending that's yeah a decent a good way to end the show again it just goes back to the fact that like when the end of the show comes and everybody is still together mm-hmm. we don't lose we don't lose everything we just spent yeah. however many years watching yeah. so. All right, there it is, our Big Bang Theory podcast. What'd you think? I love. I I still I still will rewatch it. I still I like to watch it all the time. It's good comfort TV for us. Although we're in a Cheers phase right now, so well, yeah. Because well, first of all, we want to do a Cheers episode on the podcast, but two, it is it's a that's another well written show mm-hmm. until the last couple of seasons. But still, it was, it's a strong show. It is a strong, strong yep. show. You know, and it led to so much other stuff. Absolutely. You know, Kelsey Grammer. I right, know, right. When you think that was a part that was written just for a few episodes, yeah, and, and then, then people just happened to like him, so. yeah, and he spun off. And that's I love the fact that they make they they joke about that on Frasier when they yeah. talk about imagine imagine having to play a character for the same character for twenty years, right? And they, they were talking about him, they were talking about some fictitious thing. Yeah. Like, can you believe somebody had to do that? And it's almost like they give that almost like wink to the camera. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that was fun. And the only one to win three uh, an Emmy for playing the same character on three different shows. He won an Emmy for Cheers. He won an Emmy for Frasier. And he won an Emmy for the quick one oh, episode on right, Wings. Wings. That's right. The one guest appearance he did on Wings with uh, with uh, B.B. Newworth yeah. and John Ratzenberger and George Went. They're all on that show. They're That's all right. on that episode. I remember that one. Yeah. I remember that. So, yeah, he won an Emmy for that as a guest appearance yeah. type of thing. So the only actor to play the same character on three different shows and win an Emmy for all three. Hey, Boston TV. Yep, that's right. That's right. Cheers, Wings. Wings. Oh, God, I love that show. We'll have to do a Wings episode. Mm-hmm. That was my favorite. Antonio Scarpacci is still my favorite character. God love Tony Shalhoub. 
We should and, do a monk episode too. Oh, we're gonna put that on the list. We're definitely gonna do a monk episode. You and I love monk. Absolutely. We do. Yeah. My we grandfather do love monk. my grandfather was monk. My mother's father. We always mm-hmm. joked about that. Super rigid and had to do things and everything was perfect and written out and oh yeah. Yeah, I see a little crooked finger pointing at me. What are you saying? I'm monk? We can tell the story about the phone in Italy when we do the monk episode. All right. Well, that's that's a little teaser for the next for the next uh, monk episode. We'll talk about that. That's fine. That is true. I'll admit it. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed tonight's episode uh, on the Big Bang Theory. Uh, thank you, Amy. As always, pleasure to be I here. Love having you on the on the podcast. I know people do too. So, gang, if you'd like to uh, hear more from us, uh, feel free to drop us a line on ent- engageentertainmentrants.com. Certainly, feel free to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, you can find us on social media at Entertainment Rants and on Twitter at Entertain Rants. All right, everybody, thank you again, Amy. Thank you. All right, everybody, let's let, we're gonna come up with a new hashtag. Let's rant. Do you like that one? Sure. So hashtag Let's rant. Yeah.